Okay, everybody, welcome. We're going to be doing a little uh, video today on mouse and keyboard control flying for bombers and attackers in simulation. A lot of people ask me, you know, hey, is it possible to fly sim with just a mouse and keyboard? And the answer is absolutely yes, unflinching. And we're going to demonstrate that for you today. We've got a B-25 bomber for the USA lineup. This is my number one recommended aircraft for anyone trying to learn sim. This is the plane that you want to learn sim in. If you don't have this, I recommend the BF-110 for Germany. Um, anyway, we're going to start from the beginning. We're going to go right back to uh, basic controls. So go ahead and head into your controls menu so you can follow along. We're going to go to the control setup window, uh, and we're going to grab the keyboard and mouse only advanced. I'm going to select that layout. Now, one thing we're going to do just to get it out of the way is when you come in here, uh, we're going to grab full real controls. And when you exit out of full real controls, it's going to keep warning you about this stuff. So let's go ahead and knock that out right now so it doesn't keep doing that. So toggle SAS mode. Let's go ahead and uh, get SAS mode on insert. Uh, reverse thrusters. I'm going to go ahead and just put that on delete. And we'll go to the helicopters real quick. Axis. Missile control axis. Uh, I really don't use any of this, so you guys can bind that stuff as whatever you want. And we'll just do all that. And now when we exit out of the menu, it won't yell at us anymore. Uh, once we're here in the menu, uh, we go to full wheel controls. We've got mouse joystick. Uh, once you've chosen mouse joystick up here in full wheel controls, you're going to have this new mouse joystick section down here. We're going to take a little visit. And... We're going to, for the purposes of today, we're going to leave this into simplified mode, but when you get the hang of sim and you feel like you're ready to continue on and, you know, try out some fighters and try out some dogfighting, you're definitely going to want to drop this down into standard. So sensitivity is a big one. If you go up to 100% sensitivity, that is going to make your mouse move super wildly around the screen, and that can be very, very difficult to be any kind of accurate with, right? So counterintuitively, I actually recommend people drop this way down. I like about 10%, but find a personal preference on that. With 10% sensitivity, you can see that same movement on my keyboard is much smoother and much more precise, and I can sit here and very methodically move everything into the correct position. Um, so that's your sensitivity. I do recommend lowering that down a little bit. Going back into the uh, controls here, we've got dead zone. Now, for the purposes of today, we're going to leave our dead zone on 20%. When you get into the fighters and you move up into standard, I recommend dropping this dead zone down to 0%. But for today, 20% is a nice little value. And that gives you this little uh, circle here where you can park your uh, where, where you can park your mouse. And you can see how when you leave the circle, it lights up. And when you re-enter the circle, it grays out. When it's grayed out, there's no control input going on. And when you leave it, you start putting you start putting in active controls there. And the the bigger that area is is based on the dead zone. So you can see it doesn't start turning uh, white until right about there. That's about the boundary there on 20%. So you, you have this nice little area right in here where you can park your mouse. And if you put your mouse in the middle and you bump your desk on accident, there's a you know it's less likely to actually uh, you know do any control into the uh, actual aircraft. So we've got screen size. Now, screen size on 0%, you might like this, but to me, I think it clutters up the middle of the screen. And you can see uh, you can see this like little uh, box here, this little box right here, which is marking the boundary of our, uh, of, of our range of motion for the mouse control. And I think it's better to kind of clear up this area. So I like my screen size to be jacked all the way up and that brings these brackets way out to the side and it gives you a uh, you know a bigger a bigger range of motion as far as for for your mouse uh, where, where you could park everything it kind of declutters the middle of your screen which is where all the action is going to be that's just my opinion but if you want to try different screen sizes there's no harm there uh, cursor screen plays honestly I have no idea what this does I've never touched it aileron and rudder controls when you get up into the standard here you're going to want to try to be close to 100%, but for our purposes today, we're going to keep them down on about 25% or so, and that'll just slow down the movement of your ailerons and your rudders and keep everything a lot more smooth. Square and circle, personal preference. Uh, without the square turned on, you now have a giant circle, and there's no exact 45 degree, you know, in order to go full left, uh, full left, 
rudder, full left aileron, and full downward pitch, you have to kind of try to guess where that is between the, these two marks. And it's probably right about here, but in the heat of the moment, that can be difficult to find. If you have a square shape, it's a lot more easy to, bam, that corner. You know that corner right there. You can't go any further left. You can't go any further up. It's stuck right there in that corner. That's why I like the square, but maybe maybe you prefer the circle, and that's fine. Center mouse joystick. This one right here, we're going to go with middle mouse button. Middle mouse button doesn't do anything in sim. It does lock target in the other modes, and that's still useful for those other modes, so we're not going to unbind it. What we're going to do is we're going to add it. So in arcade and realistic, middle mouse button will lock your target, but in sim, it'll return your cursor to the center. And that's nice if you're kind of if you lose lose your cursor for any reason, or you need to put your mouse back in the center of your desk, and then you want to get everything back in the middle. You hit middle mouse button, and all of a sudden, all this stuff just kind of goes right back to uh, goes goes right back to the middle for you, so you can find that cursor a little bit easier. Uh, so that's it for your mouse joystick settings. Next thing we want to do is come in here to your trim aircraft. We're going to delete all this. I go into the trim aircraft uh, much more in depth in my trimming video if you guys are interested in that. But for the purposes of today, we're just going to go ahead and run through all these controls. Trimmer fixation, left control, alt to T, elevator trim axis. We're going to go into 30% step, 1%, I'm sorry, 1% step, 30% sensitivity, increase value as down, counterintuitively. All right, down. There, there we go. Re replace that, and up, and replace that. Reset axis value is up and down together. And then rudder. Rudder, we're going to go increase value as right, and we replace. Decrease value as left, and then we replace. Reset axis value, left and right, and 30%, and 1%. And aileron, we're going to go right control, right, Right control left, right control left and right. 30% and 1%. Perfect. Uh, that's it for your trim. And the next thing you want to do is come in here to your camera control. This one's huge. We're going to go to zoom axis. We're going to go to decrease value. We're going to set that as left shift and add, left control and add, and mouse wheel up. And that's all done. And then we're going to go ahead and head into the head upward movement. Delete all that. Head left and right movement. Delete all that. So head upward and downward. We're going to go to maximum value and set that as right click. Tracking camera enemy. Add. This does not work in sim. So in your arcade or realistic controls, you'll still have tracking camera enemy. But in sim, it'll move your head movement upwards. And for your head movement left and right, I've got two little side buttons on my mouse, so I'm going to set uh, one as one side button, and I'm going to replace those rockets. I'm going to set one as the other side button, and I'm going to replace those bombs. And that's perfect. And what that does for us is it allows us to move our head up, move our head right, move our head left, and we can hold C and move around, and if we want to see behind our tail, you know what I mean, you can kind of like lean around the window a little bit better. You can see up and over the controls. If you're trying to land the plane, you can just hold right click and you can see more of the runway. If that sight is in your way, like you're trying to land on an aircraft carrier, you can move off to the left. All with your little uh, things here and then you can look around by holding C. All right. The only other thing that we want to do is come in here to your mechanization. And under four wheel controls, left brake and right brake are still B in all the other modes, this is just called a break. But in full real controls, we actually have differential braking available to us, but we have to bind it. By default, it's still just set as B as your brake. But what we're going to do is we're going to set the left brake to actually be the left rudder, which is Q. Q and WASD still works in this full wheel control, so you can fly around with your, uh, you know, your keyboard. And Q is your left rudder. Well, Q can also be your left brake, and that helps you steer in the ground. So let's add Q here and add it to the yaw left. And let's add E here and add it to the yaw right. So now when you're doing right rudder, you're also doing right brake. If you're in the air, the brake doesn't matter. And if you're on the ground and you're using right rudder, you also want to be using right brake to help you steer to the right. And that'll make uh, controlling on the ground a lot simpler. Taking off and taxiing will be a lot simpler. Uh, the only other recommendation that I make is to change your engine toggle not to be I, but you want it to be like Alt and I, or something like that. You don't want it to just be the regular I key, because you'll accidentally press it and turn your engines off. That's about it. Let's go ahead and get in the air. Alt and I, to start up here. And... 
We're gonna go ahead and throttle up. And you notice we zoom out when we throttle up and now I'm gonna start tapping the E key. Just tap it, tap it. And you can see that brake and that rudder is helping to keep the plane centered up down the runway because the plane wants to switch off to the left due to that adverse yaw from the engine's rotation. So you can hear me just tapping that E key as I go down. Put the flaps in place, just tap the F key once. We get to 100 knots, we just pull that mouse cursor up and just keep tapping E to keep the plane nice and level there. Bring the gear up once, bring the flaps up once, and bam, we're flying. Now if we want to do a right turn, we can just move our mouse cursor off to the right and keep it above the plane here so, we are, uh, so we're you know, in a climbing right-hand turn. And the nice thing about this is the plane will do this forever. Even when you're in gunner view, even when you're in bomber view, when you switch back to the pilot view, it'll keep doing this right turn. Even when you're looking around, when you're checking your six, when you're trying to look at the map, it doesn't matter what you're doing. As long as that mouse cursor stays right here, this plane will stay in a slight climbing right turn. So let's see if we can uh, land, land this puppy on an aircraft carrier using just these mouse controls here. So we'll go ahead and bring in some flaps. Add a little bit of power. And bring in some gear. We'll add a little bit of power. And bring in some more flaps. We'll add a little bit more power. And finally, we'll bring in some more flaps and we'll add a little bit of power. Now we've got the aircraft carrier over there. So you can use WASD to fly plus the mouse cursor. So you can kind of like get the mouse cursor in a nice little left turn and make little corrections with WASD. And when you let go of WAS and D, the plane will sort of like continue back on that left turn. So you can use the mouse cursor to set like the default desired path of the aircraft and use WASD to make, you know, more precise corrections. Alright guys, we're going to try that again from an aircraft carrier that is uh, actually moving right over here. That ought to help me actually make a, a full stop. It's kind of hard to land on that stationary carrier with such a big plane. Um, but if you haven't considered playing bombers in sim, I highly recommend it. Honestly, uh, some of the fighters might get upset with you that you play bombers, but that's not really your problem. Uh, bombers are just as welcome in sim as anybody else. It's just as much your mode as it is belonging to the fighters. And personally, I really think Gaijin just ought to make simulation EC lobbies up to 64 person limits, which has already been demonstrated in the game's custom lobbies as feasible. It would make ECs much more lively and would make, uh, you know, bombers feel like they're not taking up as many slots from the fighters and whatnot, which I think is really the the biggest problem uh, that the fighters have is that they're like, you know, for every bomber that we have, that's somebody that's not dogfighting. Um, but I wouldn't worry yourself too much about it. Come in here and get your experience. Sim is a wonderful place. You can play it casually with this mouse and keyboard control, you know, if you got a crying baby, if your doorbell rings or something like that, you can uh, you can leave your bomber on course, on target, and come back, and uh, it'll, it won't be, you know, in the trees. And that can be, um, that can be nice. See how much easier it is to set it down on this carrier? So much simpler. And you see how this 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 right click is nice for being able to uh, kind of see up and over the nose a little bit. So you can actually see what you're doing. But guys, that is mouse and keyboard controls in a nutshell. But anyway guys, that's about it for Sim. Um, mouse and keyboard controls are absolutely doable whenever you feel like you're ready. You know, go ahead and drop, drop them more down into the standard mode and increase those sensitivities and decrease that dead zone and try, try your hand at fighters. But before you go right from a bomber into a fighter, I recommend trying to use some attackers in the middle. Like grab something like a BF-110 and go after the howitzers, go after the tanks, go after the bomber objectives, go after the attacker objectives, go after the uh, surveillance. Um, and then start going into the A points, you know what I mean? Because the attackers are a nice intermediary from going from a bomber to a fighter because you have a little bit more maneuverability 
you have a little bit more control, you have more guns that you can actually use to, to fight with, you have a little bit more speed, but you still typically have a defensive gunner, which as a brand new sim pilot, that can be huge for your situational awareness, because people are going to sneak up on you, they are going to get on your six, and if you're in a fighter and you're flying straight and you have no idea anybody's back there, they're just going to blast you in half and, and, and be gone before you even realize what happened. At least if you're in something like a BF-110 and you're flying along, your tail gunner will start chattering with his gun, and even if your tail gunner is not effective with his fire, you'll hear that gunfire and be like, oh man, I should start doing stuff. You know what I mean? So it's a nice little transition until you get used to keeping your head on a swivel. And that's the trick. In Sim, it doesn't matter what you use. Whether you use a joystick, whether you use an Xbox controller, whether you use mouse and keyboard, it only matters how much you practice with it. And the king in Sim, more so than anything else, more so than having the fanciest joystick or the best rudder pedals, the absolute biggest single advantage that you can have is situational awareness right here, your Mark I eyeballs. My number one recommended upgrade is this right here, Track IR. You saw me using just mouse and keyboard controls to look around. It is doable, but it's a lot more difficult to keep track of your targets and to keep track of that battle space. And every little bit of extra effort that you're having to apply doing it is just a distraction from your flying with track IR, it's so nice because you know it's reflexive you want to look right you just look right you want to look up you just look up and it's like it's it's already innately built in here you've been practicing it for however long you've been alive so it's nice and fluid this is my single biggest simulation recommendation upgrade um, before you buy a joystick before you buy a throttle controller before you buy anything else get either like some VR or some track IR or something like that. Um, I use the track IR pro bundle. I can't recommend it enough. I'm not sponsored. Nobody's paying me to say this. I actually love it so much. I have two of them. That's my backup one up there. I'm not joking. That's literally what that is up there in case I break another one <laughs> in case I break this one. Uh, but that's about it guys. That is my, that is my SIM advice. Um, I hope that helps and I, I hope this video gets a few more people up in the skies and be sure to join the discord it'll be down in the uh, comments below for the links to that and you know never fly alone we've got right now about 2,000 pilots that are online at any given hour of the day any given day of the week we're ready to teach you we're ready to fly with you we're ready to fly against you we're ready to open up lobbies with you we're ready to do events with you we're ready to fly and share the skies and we hope to see you there sooner rather than later maybe at one of the next events that we do until next time Thank you for the privilege of your time. Fly safe and good hunting. 07.